Weird Wednesday. I'm Suburban Hobo. Call me Daryl House. I'm here with my partner, John House, and you can call him Used Toy if you prefer. Hi, John. How are you? I'm doing well. How about you? Oh, it's my anniversary today. NBA is over. Hockey is over. I'm uh, going to the beach with my wife at a hotel, and we're going to a fancy restaurant tonight, and all is right with my world. Well, congratulations on your heat winning. I thought you were going to say congratulations on 30 years of marriage. Ah, uh, no, that, that's just to be expected. Well, you know, for all those people who uh, said it'll never last. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you got for us today, Daryl? Uh, I have some stories. Oh, wait, I, I, I think I'm starting today. Oh, no. Well, I've, got a, I've got a story right out of Florida. Uh -oh. uh, let's see. Um, a uh, Brandon Antron Crosley punches his dad over how to make Kool-Aid. <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, a 22-year-old, so we're not talking about like a kid, we're talking about a 22-year-old son was making Kool-Aid. His dad told him he was doing it wrong, so he punches his father. That's, that's, that's family. Family bonding. Well, we probably he we hadn't put in the vodka yet. <laughs> you use Stoli. You don't use Sky. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Well, you know, I got a couple of Florida stories here today also. And one of them, I think you're going to like this because I have an old crow connection. Nice. Are you ready for this? Upset with his stepson's alleged heavy drinking, which can tie into the Kool-Aid story perhaps here, William Calvin Crow, 87 years old, is accused of shooting the 54-year-old man in the face and neck for being a moocher. Wow. <laughs> The stepson who survived the attack had been sitting under the carport at Crow's home when Crow approached him and discharged several shots with a 25 caliber gun. <laughs> the North Fort Myers man is now facing an attempted murder charge. But the old Crow, Calvin Crow, isn't there a Calvin's whiskey or something also? I, 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 this guy sounds a little irritable, though. I'm, I'm not sure I'd mess with him. This works on so many different levels. I'm just loving it. Well, uh, this one I, I absolutely loved. My thanks to the Huffington Post. You know, they, they talk about don't try to uh, to run from police officers because you, you can't outrun the radio. Well, this guy swam two and a half miles. He tried swimming from the police two and a half miles in 65-degree water uh, in a seven-hour standoff. And, of course, the police just walked along the beach waiting for this guy to, uh, to come out. He was in the water so long that he suffered from hypothermia, and, uh, and they, they basically had to, like, uh, give him medical attention before yeah, arresting him and taking him to jail. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we don't always talk about these stories before we do them, but John, this is an added value story based on that. A drunken cyclist, a bicyclist, a bicyclist, whatever you call him, up in Gainesville, he was jailed after he fled from an officer who used his lights and siren in his patrol car. He's on a bicycle, but he's going, <laughs> he's on a bicycle trying to escape the police, and he's making the siren sounds, and when the, fi when the cops finally got him, he had some pot in his pocket, and he screamed, I surrender, before he intentionally runs over and slams his head into the patrol car. <laughs> Can't make this up. No, but that wasn't my story. That's, that's the added value story. I, I, I couldn't pass it. I was letting that What was I thinking? I was going to let that go. Here's the one I wanted to talk about. Walmart. You know, we all love Walmart. Absolutely. Uh, so these two women, they turned their shopping trip into a disorderly wine drinking outing. Deputies say Alicia Rose Potter, <coughs> sold in Everglades City, and her pal Megan Pace of Copeland were busted after swiping some vino off the shelves of a Walmart in Naples, Florida. And then they, they opened the wine and began drinking it while they were strolling around. They were finally arrested on charges of disorderly intoxication and taken to the Naples jail. Nice. I love Florida. God, I love Florida. Well, you know, uh, we, we talked, uh, you were telling me about a story earlier. Uh, and so I've, my final story is a, uh, a woman dressed as a vagina saves a man dressed as a penis from attacker. 
This apparently happened over in uh, in England. They were dressed this way to promote uh, a one woman show in Glastonbury, England. When uh, when people uh, a guy got upset that uh, the way they were dressed, and so he he assaulted the penis, and uh, and the the woman who was dressed as a vagina, and as you see from this picture, she uh, she had to come from his res to his rescue. John, you're not going to believe this. My last story has to deal with the play, The Vagina Monologues. Nice. Now, up in, and this is out of Wisconsin. You know, the, the, they got a lot of Christians in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. The vaginas, Wisconsin. The vaginas seem to be causing serious problems there. The Stage North Theater in Washburn, Wisconsin, was stunned when an ad that the company took out for its production of the Vagina Monologues was censored in the Ashland Daily Press newspaper. The editors put big X's across the, the letters of the words vagina, turning it into an ad for a notice of XXXXX monologues, which actually kind of sounds a little racier when you think about it. Well, the decision backfired because the story went viral, so now everybody knows that the play is there, and everybody knows that this newspaper is a bunch of, you know, anal, retentive, uh, whatever they are. So, but this this did come up. They say that, that they're hoping that if they're going to censor the ads for the theater, that they will also keep a level playing field here, and perhaps they're going to have to um, censor Dick's Sporting Goods or... <laughs> Or Shandong Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm out of material. What do you? <laughs> All right. Well, I, we hope you guys uh, out there had a, a great week. Thanks for joining us on BalonyBrain.com, and we will see you soon. <laughs> Goodbye, folks. Daryl, have a great anniversary. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>